Dear students, today we are going to start with the new subtopic of the chapter Coordinate Geometry and the subtopic is Section Formula. So let's start by deriving the Section Formula. The objectives for the day are First, we'll inspect the elements of Section Formula. Secondly, we'll highlight the conditions of similar triangles as we are going to derive the section formula by applying the conditions of similar triangles. Now, before starting with the derivation of the section formula, let us try to understand what are the elements involved in section formula. The first element of section formula is it involves at least three coordinates. So, between any two known coordinates, there can be several unknown coordinates. For reference, let us consider the following figures. So, if we are moving from a point A to a point B, where point A we can consider as our home or a place which is known to us. So, the coordinates are known to us. And we want to reach point B. Point B can be a place where you go for your studies. It can be market or it can be your friend's place or any place for which the coordinates are known to you. So you know the initial and the final coordinates, but you're not quite sure about the path that connects the two point. So while taking the path, there can be several pauses or stops wherein you might wonder for the correct coordinates. So what you are doing by taking the pauses is you're creating sections or segments in your journey. So that is the first logic. Between the two known coordinates, you may create several unknown coordinates by taking small pauses or stops. In the given figures as well, these people were looking for the correct direction or correct coordinates. And now we have come to know that in the first picture, the person needs to go towards his or her right and in the second picture the person needs to take second turn left. So between the two known coordinates the unknown coordinates in between can create sections or segments which are also known as ratio which is the second element of our section formula. In order to understand ratio even better let us consider this example. Suppose you have this chocolate bar with you and just when you are about to have it, one of your friends popped up. Now since sharing is caring, you need to divide this chocolate with your friend. There are various possibilities in which you can divide the chocolate. Let us see some of the possibilities. First, you could have divided the chocolate like this in the ratio of 3 to 2, where you have kept the bigger part and you have given the smaller part to your friend. Or you could have done it the other way around, broken the chocolate in part of 2 is to 3, keeping the smaller one with you and giving the bigger one to your friend. Or else, just to make it fair, you could have divided the chocolate into two equal parts like this in the ratio of 1 is to 1. So this is how we create section or ratio between any two points. This is only for reference. We can consider some other situations as well in order to understand the concept of creating sections or ratios. Planet, while the bleak and shooting magician gave away the store, that's what happened. There's no fight. Okay. He's in people. Did he give you any clues? Any coordinates? Anything? You, Cap, I got no coordinates, no clues, no strategies, no options. Now, let us derive section formula using the conditions of similar triangles. Right here we have two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle PQR. Triangle ABC is said to be similar to triangle PQR if the notation for similar triangles, triangle ABC similar to triangle PQR if number one, corresponding angles are equal. All the corresponding angles should be equal. First up, angle A equals to angle B. The angles on the top. Next, angle B equals to angle Q. 
the angles on the left of the triangle and finally angle C equals to angle R the angles towards the right so all the corresponding angles should be equal this similarity is also known as angle 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 or a similarity as if two angles of a triangle are equal in measurement the third angle will always be equal that's why triple a or you can also write simply double a because if two angles are equal the third angle is definitely going to be equal the next condition for similarity of triangles is the corresponding sides should be proportional the ratio of the corresponding sides must be equal that is ab by pq the sides on the left the ratio of the sides on the left equals to the ratio of the basis bc by qr equals to the ratio of the sides on the right ac by pr so the ratio of all the corresponding sides should be equal this is known as sss similarity side 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 similarity all the corresponding sides should be proportional there is third condition of similar triangle as well and that is if one corresponding angle is equal and the sides included in it are proportional however this similarity criterion will not be used in the derivation of section formula so we will not elaborate it for the time being we will elaborate it properly whenever we will do the chapter triangles now let the align segment on a cartesian plane as you can see there are three points we have marked on the line segment let us denote the end points as a x1 comma y1 and b x2 comma y2 the point that is dividing the join of a and b as p x comma y since p is dividing the join of a and b or in other words p is creating section between a and b so we need to find the formula for coordinates of p which is also known as the section formula let's say the distance between a to p is m1 and the distance from b to p is m2 so p has divided ab in the ratio of m1 is to m2 now we are assuming p x comma y is dividing the join of a x1 comma y1 and b x2 comma y2 in the ratio ap is to pb equals to m1 is to m2 next let's draw perpendiculars from these points first aq perpendicular to os pr perpendicular to os bs perpendicular to os au perpendicular to pr and pt perpendicular to bs now this has given us two triangles as you can see triangle aup and triangle ptb now let's figure out the sides of this triangle let's start with base of triangle aup which is au here au will be equals to qr since au and qr are moment along the x axis so the x coordinates will give us the distance of au or qr here r is the further point that means coordinate of r should subtract coordinate of q the x coordinate of r is x itself and the x coordinate of q is x1 so qr equals to au will be equals to x minus x1 now the base of triangle ptb is pt so now as you can see pt will be equals to rs as they are parallel with each other now t here is the further point that means or x coordinate of t will subtract x coordinate of p the x coordinate of t is x2 and x coordinate of p is x itself so we will have rs equals to pt equals to x2 minus x now let's talk about the perpendiculars first the perpendicular of triangle aup that is pu so pu here is moment along the y axis so the difference of the y coordinates will give us the distance of pu p is the further point here so 
the y coordinate of p will subtract the y coordinate of u. The y coordinate of p is y itself and y coordinate of u is y1. So, the distance of pu will be y minus y1. Next, the perpendicular of triangle PTB that is BT. B is the further point here. So, y coordinate of B which is y2 will subtract the y coordinate of T which is y. So, BT will be equals to y2 minus y. So, we have got the required for distances or the measurement of the sides. The next task in hand is to show that triangle AUP is similar to triangle PTB. The first thing that we have in these triangles is angle U will be equals to angle T as both will be 90 degree each. Remember PR and BS were the perpendiculars that we had constructed. So both will be 90 degrees each angle u and angle t next angle a will be equals to angle p as angle a and angle b they are corresponding angles in the line segment ab here a u and pt they are parallel and if a p b acts as its transversal then angle a and angle p they will be equal as they will be corresponding angles so since we have already shown that these two angles are equal. The third angle that is angle P in AUP and angle B in PTB, they will definitely be equal which we don't need to show because we have already shown that the two angles are equal. So definitely the third angle will also be equal. So we can say triangle AUP is similar to triangle PTB by angle angle similarity. Hence corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. The ratio of the basis AU by PT will be equals to the ratio of the hypotenuse AP by PB. And it will be equals to the ratio of the perpendiculars PU by BT. Since AP by PB is the actual segment that we had from the line segment AB, so we will equate the ratio of the basis and the ratio of the perpendiculars with AP by PB. So, we will have AU by PT equals to AP by B PB as the first equation and PU by BT equals to AP by PB as the second equation. We had got AU equals to X minus X1, PT equals to X2 minus X, PU equals to Y minus Y1, BT equals to Y2 minus Y and AP will be equals to M1 and PB will be equals to M2. So let's put the respective values. We will get X minus X1 by X2 minus X equals to M1 by M2 in the first equation and Y minus Y1 by Y2 minus Y equals to M1 by M2 as the second equation. Let's solve this equation in order to equate for X. The equation is x minus x1 by x2 minus x equals to m1 by m2. So on cross multiplying, we will get m2 into x minus x1 equals to m1 into x2 minus x. m2 into x will be m2x plus into minus minus m2 into x1 will be m2x1 equals to m1 into x2, we will get m1x2 plus into minus minus m1 into x m1 x. So now let's shift the quantities with variable x in the left hand side and others in the right hand side. So we will get m2 x minus m1 x we are shifting towards the left so the sign will change plus m1 x equals to m1 x2 we are shifting minus m2 x1 to the right hand side so the sign will change plus m2 x1. In the quantities we have in the left hand side x is common so we can take x common so within the brackets we'll get m2 as x is already taken common plus m1 as we have already taken x common so x into m2 plus m1 within the brackets equals to m1 x2 plus m2 x1 let's make a small adjustment and swap the places of m1 and m2 
So we will get x into m1 plus m2 equals to m1 x2 plus m2 x1. So finally, we just need to shift m1 plus m2 to the right hand side. m1 plus m2 here is in multiplication with x. So while shifting it to the right hand side, it will divide the quantities that are there in the right hand side. So we will get x equals to m1 x2 plus m2 x1 divided by m1 plus m2. So this is the equation for x. Similarly, let's equate the equation y minus y1 by y2 minus y equals to m1 by m2 to get the equation for y. So cross multiplying will get m2 into y minus y1 equals to m1 into y2 minus y. m2 into y will be m2y plus into minus minus m2 into y1 will be m2y1 equals to m1 into y2 m1y2 plus into minus minus m1 into y m1y. Now let's bring the quantities with variable y towards the left hand side and other quantities in the right hand side. We will get m2y plus m1y equals to m1y2 plus m2y1. Now in the quantities that are there in the left hand side, y is common. So if we we'll take y common, we will get y within brackets m2 plus m1 as y is already taken as common equals to m1y2 plus m2y1. Let's swap the places of m1 and m2 again. y into m1 plus m2 equals to m1y2 plus m2y1. So again, we need to shift m1 plus m2 or towards the right hand side. So the equation for y will be equals to m1y2 plus m2y1 by m1 plus m2. Hence, we have got the coordinates of P which was dividing the join of A and B as P x comma y equals to m1 x2 plus m2 x1 by m1 plus m2 m1 y2 plus m2 y1 by m1 plus m2 since these are the coordinates so this should always be written inside the round bracket or the parenthesis this is our section formula finally let's look at a special case for section formula that is when the ratio between m1 is to m2 equals to 1 is to 1 when the sections are equal so m1 and m2 the values are 1 each so p x comma y in this case will be equals to 1 into x2 plus 1 into x1 by 1 plus 1 comma 1 into y2 plus 1 into y1 by 1 plus 1 so the values of m1 and m2 are 1 we will have 1 into x2 as x2 and 1 into x1 as x1 x2 plus x1 by 2 comma similarly y2 plus y1 by 2 or we can say p x comma y equals to x1 plus x2 by 2 comma y1 plus y2 by 2 but this is applicable only when the ratio between m1 is to m2 equals to 1 is to 1 so your task for the day is to work on the derivation of section formula on your own thank you and have a nice day